Hey guys, it's Carl. Welcome to one of the first videos of uh, 2023. I always kick the year off uh, with a tech travel pack vid, as uh, by the time you're watching this, we actually might be currently en route to CES, uh, CES Consumer Electronics Show, the largest tech show of the year uh, for us techies. Obviously, I've got my travel pack all full and nicely juiced up, charged up and ready to go. So if you're interested in, you know, what's in the pack, interested in what tech I'm carrying around, you're in the right place. Uh, let's get into our tech travel pack, which you can see is a brand new one this year. So this is a DB Journey. They uh, formerly were called uh, Douchebags. They've uh, changed their name, changed some of their branding, but essentially still have some of the dopest packs and uh, big shout outs to them for, uh, you know, hooking me up uh, with this episode. They have this in sunset orange. I knew when I saw it, I am immediately had to grab it as a lot of the tech that you'll see is of course uh, riddled with orange. So if this is the first time you're watching my channel, I am uh, team orange everything. Getting to the actual pack itself, uh, this is their Strom 20 liter and they have a bunch of different sizes, obviously so many different colors to choose from. So I've had this one and I reviewed a raspberry color in one of their different styles before. I think just kind of judging on how I've used it, uh, you could really go for both. It depends what styling you want, but this is the traditional DB look. It's got uh, all these nice little panels that are actually quite hard, which give the bag some rigidity. And of course, around the outsides, I know that most packs tend to pick up a bit of wear and tear, but what I love about DB bags, they actually are made of this nice little nylon material. You can kind of hear it. So even if this does get brushed or dirty, you can easily clean it off. And that's the same thing with, uh, you know, what's on the back. So to some of the bag features that make it, uh, you know, a little bit techy, they obviously have this nice little zipper on the back. This is typically where you put your laptop. So I will kind of bring mine into a question. I'll talk about it in a second. It's the MacBook Air, but you can see how that slots perfectly into there. And of course that nice front loading zipper and the zipper quality on these bags is pretty on point. I've had them for close to a year and I've never had issues. And you can see inside, this is where all my tech actually kind of belongs. So we'll get to all these goodies um, as the video goes on, but just to show you how this bag actually looks, you've got all these nice zippers along the bottom here, which you can store things like smartphones, cards, and of course, all of your essentials like my main smartphone, usually my passport, live in this nice little zipper up top. So super, super functional. Obviously the color is on point and um, it's one of the best packs that I've used in the years I've been um, doing YouTube videos. And trust me, I do my tech travel pack at least three, four times a year. These are by far some of my favorite bags to use. Getting to the computer, which we kind of just saw. So this is the machine that pretty much runs the channel, runs all of um, you know the vids that you see here. So this is the 2022 MacBook Air. So it's the brand new redesign, a telltale sign, of course, other than this, um, midnight colorway, which I kind of go back and forth on. I think it's the most unique. I think it's one of the best looking, but it's by far the worst fingerprint magnet for an Apple device. Uh, you can just quickly tell the use I have on it. You can see all the smudges, you can see all the dirt, especially as I rotate it here. So if you are a stickler for that, stick to a silver MacBook. Um, I have my 16 inch MacBook Pro behind me. That is by far the easier one to keep clean. But if you want uh, something unique, something clean, definitely the midnight one is um, probably the option to go for. So the exact spec, which I usually recommend to everyone is kind of this one right here, minus the hard drive storage, which we'll get to in a second. So this is the 16 gig option. That's obviously 16 gigs of RAM. This is rocking the M2 chip. This one has a terabyte of storage, but if you're trying to save a little bit of money, I would just say grab the 512. And as we get to some of the other accessories, you'll see that I have external hard drives for pretty much most of what I would say 95% of people do on laptops, you can get by with the MacBook Air unless you are seriously crunching a ton of 4K files, maybe even 8K, you might need to look to the MacBook Pro. The only big difference between this and the 16 inch MacBook Pro within the workflow, so we'll edit this video um, in this um, actual device, it's just as smooth, but it's just the publishing or rendering times, which take longer on the Air. And obviously this costs uh, probably close to $1,000 less than the MacBook Pro. So if you aren't, uh, you know, a stickler for time, if you can just uh, render something for an extra, what, couple minutes, 
honestly, the MacBook Air is the option to go for and the best part of the Air, hence the name, it's super lightweight, it's portable, it fits into the pack nice and easy and if you are someone that's on the road, I think I broke my record this year for time spent on a plane. Nick, we calculated it was five and a half times around the world in 2022. Hours? 201 hours. 201 hours spent on planes. It was a hectic travel year for me. So uh, trust me, in my time crafting the perfect tech travel pack, you just wanna keep things uh, nice and lightweight. And that's where the MacBook Air really, really shines. So switching on to devices, and I'd argue you're probably on your smartphone the most out of probably any piece of tech, uh, no matter what you kind of carry around. So my main one, my bread and butter, has to be the iPhone 14 Pro Max. You'll notice uh, I am pretty heavily skewed into the Apple ecosystem. I've kind of just been sucked into its black hole. I like all things uh, iMessage, AirDrop, Final Cut. Uh, those are all things on Apple, I just can't seem to leave. But for the 14 Pro Max, I will say the video quality on an iPhone is by far leaps and bounds better than what we see across any device. Um, watch any YouTube video, watch any uh, tech reviewer, they agree that um, the video quality is just on a different level. It's just so, so good. The actual phone, obviously, um, more customization on Android, which we'll get to, but if you're in the ecosystem, if you need iOS, I totally get why you're kind of sucked into this. I would say if you're still tossed up between the 14 and the 13, there aren't too many big differences. So if you can snag a 13, 13 Pro on sale, I would still recommend that. Things like Dynamic Island, they're not gonna make or break your experience. And I would even argue the battery life over on the 14 Pro Max uh, is actually less than the 13 Pro Max, and that heavily has to do with the always on display, which I've turned mine off, so you can see just a, a blank screen, and uh, that's how bad the battery life was on the 14 Pro Max. I was really, really disappointed, but um, as long as you keep that always on display off, I would say it's probably on par with the 13 Pro. Getting to my Android device, and I mentioned that I am primarily on my iPhone, but I switch out my secondary device usually to the phone that I test out over on Android. I've kind of been sucked over to the Oppo Find N2. So I was just in Malaysia for this launch, and I will say this is the best folding smartphone that you can get uh, in 2022, probably going into this year, 2023. It is so good. I love the form factor. I love how it's actually a lot more usable than say the Galaxy uh, Z Fold. You can see that it's actually a slightly different aspect ratio. So even that cover screen, I would say that it's more usable than what we have over on the Galaxy Z Fold. It isn't as tall, it isn't um, as slim. It actually feels like a fully functioning phone. And when you open it up, the hinge mechanism has actually been redesigned. And what's nice is you can't actually see that crease, which is, I think, the bane of my existence. I have that bit of OCD, like I mentioned. You can't really see that crease, especially off angle. And I'm really talking about compared to those other folding phones, it's one of the best implementations of a folding device that I've seen. The only caveat, I've you know kind of praised it so well, um, is it's unfortunately not available to the global market yet, sadly, so only available in China. It's maybe the only phone that I would say is worth importing right now, and uh, if you still need another suggestion why this uh, sage green colorway, one of my favorites, I think it's uh, gorgeous, really great folding phone. Oppo, you need to bring this uh, to the rest of the world. Trust me, people will spend the money for it. Switching on over to a tablet, so uh, I've kind of gone against uh, the bread and butter here. So I know most people will uh, kind of swear with their iPad Pros or even iPad Airs. I'm a bit weird and love actually the iPad Mini, which I have the smallest soft spot for. The biggest reason why is this right here. It's uh, the palmability, which I've coined as one of my own terms. You can use this in one hand and still fully use it as a normal device. I almost liken this to a larger iPhone. It can easily fit into the pack. It can even fit into a pocket if you have one large enough. And um, I think it's the perfect size. Because I still rock my MacBook Air, if I really need a dedicated OS or a larger screen, I can do things on that. That's why I think the iPad mini is the perfect in-between. It still is rocking the Apple Pencil second gen. You don't need to plug it in weirdly to the bottom as we have USB-C. And um, yeah, I just think it's an awesome overall little package. And I would say these three devices 
are uh, probably some of my favorites of last year and going into this year. Switching on over to my camera choice, and because uh, I make these YouTube vids and all this uh, social stuff, I would argue that I use my camera probably as the third most used piece of tech. I know that's pretty subjective, but if you are looking to get an all-in-one cam, and get into the, I guess, uh, filming space uh, to take stills, to take video. This is the A7R Mark V. I would probably still recommend the A7 Mark IV, just the A7, the classic one. The R obviously has the higher megapixel count, slightly overkill for you know all the social stuff that I create, but I've been blessed um, with Team Sony as they sent this one out. Um, it's just such a good camera. It's a 61 megapixel beast for stills, like I said, because I'm mostly posting to social. Definitely overkill, but for the video side, it can shoot up to 8K, which gives me the best possible uh, resolution to crop in and to kind of scale in if I need to. I do shoot in S-Log3, but uh, for those of you that don't need that 8K or need that 61 megapixel massive sensor, like I said, the A7, just the standard A7 Mark IV, I believe, it's a thousand or $1,500 cheaper, is probably the route to go. And for my lens of choice, the bread and butter, once again, I've said that for a couple other things, the 24 to 105 G Master, it has optical steady shot. It is only an F4, but I love the versatility. I love the fact that I just need one lens to rock around. Um, the one lens to rule them all has to be this one. If I could say the A7 Mark IV plus this lens would probably be my recommendation to most of you out there. But um, if you do have the extra money and want to shoot an 8K and be an absolute boss, a megapixel boss, then yeah, you'd have to go for the A7R Mark V. Wearables. Um, we are kind of switching on over to the Apple Watch. Like I said, once again, in that Apple ecosystem, I rarely wear my Apple Watch. I'm more of a, an OG watch guy. Um, but when I do wear an Apple Watch, mostly for working out, so you can actually see how much um, I wear a watch. I still have this uh, nasty, nasty watch tan from all of my travels this year. But I do like the Apple Watch Ultra. I'm not even ultra enough to fully justify the name. The Ultra is nice because it has that larger screen. It's obviously made of titanium, so it holds up to pretty much anything that I throw at it. And I have to give a huge shout out uh, to Nomad for this bright uh, orange strap. I actually prefer this to the um, Apple Watch Ultra strap, which is made out of a nylon, which has kind of got a bit dirty over time. That's the problem with nylon because uh, you know it's always on your wrist. You can't keep it pristine. Just having a rubber band means it's just easier uh, to keep clean, and especially if you're working out, if you're traveling, gunk likes to collect everywhere and rubber is just such a better option for a watch strap and that's the reason why I have a rubber band over on my Seamaster. So for those wondering, if you're into the watch culture, Planet Ocean, it's a diver watch. I haven't really found anything to replace this with. I'm not the biggest uh, Rolex fan, but for any of you watch geeks, um, maybe eyeing an AP but um, I'll save that for another video, another discussion as, um, yeah, that's just um, on a different level kind of thing. Going back to the rest of my essentials as things kind of plop out of my bag, I actually haven't emptied this out uh, since I've been traveling. So the rest inside, uh, you can see here, kind of uh, composes the rest of my uh, travel pack. So I've got a bunch of different accessories. So I guess we'll start off with headphones first, uh, especially with all the travels that I've done. Having a pair of noise canceling headphones is just super clutch. So these are the AirPod Maxes. They're in a custom paint job done by Colorware. So this isn't a sticker, it isn't a decal. These are custom uh, painted in orange just because I think they're super dope. I would say that the AirPod Maxes aren't worth the money. I think there's something ridiculous like $500. But because I'm on 16, 17 hour flights, I haven't found over the ear headphones that have as nice and as soft ear cups. So these are made out of memory foam. Even the Sony WH-1000 Mark Vs, even any Boses that I wear, I tend to get a bit of ear fatigue after five, six hours. Um, these ones, for the money, they're just so expensive, but um, they are comfy. Like I said, 16 hour flights from here to Taipei, from here to Hong Kong, I never need to take them off. I love them. They drown out all the crying babies. They drown out the engine sound. They're comfy, they last long. 
and they're integrated into the Apple ecosystem. You just sadly have to pay the Apple tax for them. For a pair of earbuds that I've kind of been testing, so these are the Nothing Ear Sticks. They're kind of dope because they come in this, I'll say lipstick style carrying case or container. These are the successors to the Nothing Earbuds ones, and these aren't unfortunately active noise canceling, so I just tend to wear these when I'm taking calls when I'm off the plane. But for a pair of earbuds that say aren't uh, AirPods, I think these are dope alternatives. They definitely look really cool in this uh, really cool case. You can see the Nothing branding on there, and I definitely get a lot of questions about them because they are so unique. Obviously, you have the clear case back design and um, just a dope little piece of tech that's uh, different from most of the Apple stuff. Switching on over to this little guy. So I mentioned I haven't actually taken this out of the pack yet. So this is a Peak Design carrying case. And inside of here, I keep all of my accessories so they're not just floating around loosely on the bag. So inside you can see that I have just different sorts of cables, chargers, and accessories. So I do have a Badis 18 mil. I use this uh, solely just for vlogging, which I did a bit more of this year. I came out with two big Dubai and Malaysia vlogs. I'll leave links up here. And of course, all the necessary charging cables. So for my MacBook Air, I have this larger adapter, but I would argue I use this probably more. So this is the dual charger from Samsung. It can charge 65 watts for the main one and 25 watts for the secondary. And it also has a traditional USB-A for some of those relic pieces of tech. And if you can name these cables, I'll give you a hint. This red one obviously is for OnePlus and this braided cable from, I think it's from my Pro Display XDR. So this was the ultimate cable flex. I think Apple sells these now separately, but um, if you really wanna get into uh, tech nerdiness, flexing um, iPhone cables is probably up there um, <laughs> in terms of uh, weird things that uh, we techies like to talk about. Inside of the rest of the pack, I do have those hard drives. So I just have two floating around. I kind of interchange these. Um, I mentioned that my MacBook Air is the one terabyte option, but for most of our stuff that we shoot, for example, in CES, I'm sure we'll shoot over 500 gigs of footage. So I'll probably fill up one of these hard drives. They're just great to have, easy to carry around and um, interchangeable. So always great to have external hard drives. Another piece of tech that I really found useful this year, it's this little aperture, little light, LED light. So if you've ever been to CES or seen footage, you know that it's a traditional uh, convention space. It doesn't have the best lighting. So having one of these little uh, LED boxes or when I'm on the go, just having them to shine extra light onto products that I'm reviewing, it's super, super useful. It's actually by LED, so you can change the color temperature. So you can go all the way from 6,500, so nice cool light, and you can scroll all the way down to 3200 to give something very warm light. Obviously you can change the brightness, all of that stuff. It's made by Aperture, super handy and charges via USB-C. And for a little mouse, this is just the Razer Arici V2. It's one of their custom lines. So you can see, I just put my little handle, my gamer tag slash my social media tag, um, just for a bit of self branding, especially since I've probably stayed in more hotel rooms than my actual room this year. Um, just not wanting to use the trackpad, just using a traditional mouse is way better on my wrist. So that's kind of what lives in this little peak design bag. Like I said, it's just easy to zip up. And if I can actually organize this, everything is just nice and compact. And like I said, so all those cables, all those accessories, hard drives aren't floating around freely inside of my pack. So definitely useful from peak design. And to wrap off the video, something that always comes with me um, on my travels because I go to a lot of uh, sunny, hot places, I always, carry a pair of shades. I know it's not really tech related, but so many of you have asked. So these are just a pair from Persol. I like them because uh, they're a bit different than most other shades. They've got uh, some green tortoising. And if you've ever seen any of my Instagram photos, I'm probably uh, rocking some shades on them. And um, I think that's just one of my essential pieces that I like to carry around. That is pretty much all the tech and accessories that I've been rocking um, in 2023. So I hope you guys enjoyed this vid. I hope we can kick off another solid year here on YouTube. And um, if there's any other videos that you wanna see, of course, all links of all this stuff will be listed down below and I'll catch the rest of you in one of my next ones. Peace.